President Biden never found even time to receive the congratulatory call from the Prime Minister uh, Imran Khan. This led to much heart burning and much speculation, much uh, conspiracy theorizing afterwards. Quite frankly, when things went bad, you know, as you recall, those last few weeks uh, of the withdrawal, things got really chaotic. Um, and the Taliban took over. Some of the messaging from, from Islamabad, and specifically from Imran Khan himself, uh, I, I don't think it went over very well uh, in Washington. And I think that, uh, you know, that, that could be another reason why Biden would, have been, would not have been especially inclined to, um, to give Khan a call. I mean, some leaders that are either members of the BJP uh, or, or tied to it that have, you know, openly called for violence uh, to be used against uh, Muslims. And, you know, there have been, you know, arrests have been made, things have, have taken place, but what's troubling is that there's no condemnation. You know, part of the issue is that when outside critics bring attention to these things that are going on, you know, there's this sharp pushback um, from, from uh, supporters of, of the government. You know, in Pakistan, I think that we're seeing a, a phenomenon that's been in play for quite some time. I think that politics has been polarized for many years, uh, just because you have the same personalities, the same families uh, for quite some time, sort of duking it out, so to speak, rhetorically. But you know, I would argue that that, that Imr the, the Imran Khan's uh, you know, true arrival uh, to the political stage you know, in 2018, when he became prime minister, current government right now, we've seen this unfortunate dynamic of the current government uh, cracking down. The environment for uh, for the press in Pakistan, I think, has, has always been quite tenuous. I mean, you guess. It does suggest that the press freedoms in, in India have declined uh, significantly over the years. And what, what Khan had said of after the Taliban takeover didn't sit well in Washington. And then the U.S. moved on. You know, after the withdrawal, it just uh, it just it just moved on in the effort to oust Khan. So you know, he was essentially repeatedly accusing the Biden administration of helping overthrow him. And I imagine that that's accurate. Uh, that there that it's inaccurate. That there was no U.S. role in this uh, in in Khan's removal. And so, if you think about it very logically, could you really expect the Biden administration to suddenly? sort of just move on, move beyond that and be willing to, to engage with the leader that had openly accused them of trying to overthrow him. I don't think it's, I don't think that it would be realistic to expect Khan to, to say that, uh, you know, it was a mistake for him to use that rhetoric, especially if he actually still believes that to be true. Um, but I think just having that narrative stop, uh, at least in public messaging, that, that would certainly help because, you know, indeed, uh, many in Washington, in official Washington, were very unhappy and, and upset about those repeated allegations. Uh, his meetings with President Trump and the First Lady, uh, all of that had a very good chemistry. President Trump decided he did not want to leave Afghanistan if he didn't think there was a need to have talks with the Taliban. At that point, when he wanted to leave Afghanistan and knew he needed Pakistan's help, why Khan would have, you know, why he decided not to meet with him, maybe keeping in mind domestic political concerns. If the word got out, it wouldn't look good for him optically to be meeting with the CIA director. I don't know.